Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back doing a little bit of a breakdown of each side of the bracket, going a little bit in depth of what I know, and uh, trying to give you the best little uh, upset picks. Um, I, I can't promise you that I know everything and all of that stuff. There are a lot of teams I did not get to see uh, this year, uh, and it... Um, Okay, it's a little bit hurt my breakdown, but uh, we'll get this we'll get this going. Uh, Kansas versus Austin P. I'm not breaking this down. Kansas isn't losing to Austin P. All right, Colorado UConn. Don't know a whole lot about Colorado. I do know a lot about UConn. UConn has been inconsistent all year. Uh, Sterling Gibbs has kind of slowed down. Uh, Daniel Hamilton has become more of the go-to guy. Purvis has kind of slowed down as well. Um, and uh, Brima is a little inconsistent, a great shot blocker, but a little bit inconsistent. Um, I'm not going to tell you too much about Colorado. I guess I can pull these up while I'm talking here. Um, you can see the comparison. Uh, the UConn gives up less points than Colorado. This is also one of those things where in football, any team in the Pac-12 is going to give up more points than a team in the Big Ten. Okay, so... You can take it and leave it how you want, because when you're talking about some of these ratings, a lot of them are guessing, and UConn has played a whole lot less games against the top 25 than Colorado has. Um, Colorado has kind of came to a screeching halt to end the season. Notable results, I guess, here is we can take a look at this. They beat Oregon once. They beat Cal once. They lost by four to SMU. They lost to Utah twice. Uh, they won a game against Arizona. They lost by six to Iowa State. They split with Oregon State. And they lost by seven to USC. Nothing super impressive there. And if you look at UConn's, nothing extremely impressive there. Except the one win against uh, SMU and the one win against Texas. That Michigan win is semi-impressive. Um, but in this, I still feel strongly about UConn. They're hot. They're coming off a tournament win. Um, and this is just how UConn rolls. They like to be inconsistent and a little bit wacky during the regular season. And they figure it out sometime in the, the conference tournament. Uh, Maryland, South Dakota State. I did get to see South Dakota State play a little bit. Uh, they look good to me. They beat North Dakota State to make it to the uh, to make it to the tournament. They've been 10 and 2 in their last couple of games, and uh, they don't have many notable results. They lost by 12 to Texas Tech, and they beat Middle Tennessee by four, who are in the field. But I'm not entirely sure that any of those are notable. Those aren't really notable games. They just, just should just say none. Um, UConn, or not UConn, Maryland doesn't have too many. Most of their notable results are all losses. If you look at this, why is a notable win against Michigan, why is that notable? You lost to Michigan. That should be a negative. That W shouldn't even be there. You almost lost to Michigan. But I'm going to take Maryland. Hawaii-Cal, probably the most interesting matchup of this bracket. Um... Hawaii's one loss to a top 25 team was Oklahoma, only lost by three. They beat Northern Iowa soundly, and Northern Iowa is a good team, uh, so that, that's a nice result. Arizona has kind of results all over the place. Um, the USC win by 22 was very nice. Uh, the St. Mary's win is kind of whatever. That San Diego State loss is horrible. It shows they can get beat by a team that... Uh, not a major conference, and they can get beat soundly. Um, so we are going to take the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. So we have Kansas, UConn, Maryland, Hawaii. We'll go top of the bracket all the way down. Uh, this bracket is going to be completely the bracket breakdown, uh, and we'll we'll go from there. So let's go Maryland, Hawaii straight off here. Uh, RPI rank for Maryland is 15, 86 for Hawaii. Maryland is 1-5 against the top 25, uh, and Hawaii is 0-1 against Oklahoma. Um, they, they they were 13-3 in conference. Their three losses, did we take a look at this? They not have their, yeah, they didn't have their in-conference losses. Um, I, I would have been interested to see who they lost within, I believe it's the WAC. Uh, points per game, they average, the, the stats are pretty similar between Hawaii and 
Uh, Maryland, Hawaii averages 77, while Maryland averages 76. Opponents both average around 66 for both teams. Um, and Hawaii is not far down the RPI or the BPI. They're actually, I like where they're positioned, 27 and 5. They got some wins. Uh, if you think about it, their two out of conference losses to Texas Tech and Oklahoma aren't horrible. The loss to Texas Tech isn't as bad. I believe the Oklahoma loss was was on a neutral court uh, and a loss by three. Nothing to uh, nothing to be upset about, I guess, for Hawaii against Oklahoma. Um, but I like um, I do like Hawaii's three guards. Uh, I believe they have they have the talent to actually make it to the second weekend. I just don't personally see them beating Maryland. A nice route for Hawaii would be that upset over Cal and a South Dakota State upset over Maryland. That, I believe, would put Hawaii into the Elite Eight, or no, into the Sweet 16 to face off against Kansas. Um, but I just can't take them over Maryland. So it's going to be Maryland-Kansas, but we'll take a look into this a little bit deep, deeper. RPI has uh, Kansas number one. The BPI has them five, which is a little bit interesting. They went 15-3 and three in the Big 12. Very impressive. I believe they're on a... 14 or 15 game win streak, 12 and on their own. So they're still at least 12, but I know I think it's 14 or 15. They average over 80 points. UConn, though, only gives up 63. Um, if, if you average it a little bit out, be looking at about a 70 point game out of UConn and about a 72 point game out of uh, Kansas um, if you average them out. Uh, Kansas, UConn. The American was a little bit down this year, even though they did have SMU. They struggled. The uh, American did struggle a bit out of conference this year, uh, and uh, but they did get the tournament teams in. Tulsa got in. Uh, they weren't as disrespected in years past as when SMU didn't get in two years ago, I believe, and Temple didn't get in last year. Um, but I'm going to roll with the Jayhawks, which matches us up in a Kansas-Maryland matchup. Kansas 9-3 and three against the top 25. Maryland 1-5. and five. Uh, Maryland 12-6 and six in the Big 10. And uh, Kansas 15-3 and three in the Big 12. If you average them out once again, you're looking at about an 80... Is that about an 83? No, about an 81 and a half point game out of Maryland. You're looking at about a... About a 70, 74, 75-ish out of Kansas. Um, don't really need to take a look at the notables anymore after these teams. Um, number one seeds are 35-7 and seven versus number five seeds. With the last loss coming in 2011. Okay. Um, but I'm going to take Kansas. I don't see Kansas having any chance to lose until the Elite Eight. And if it's any other team except Villanova, I don't see Kansas losing anywhere before the Final Four. Even though I do like Maryland, I'm higher on Maryland than most people. Uh, but I just like the talent they have. And I think um, I think they have a great shot uh, to make it to the Elite Eight Final Four. Uh, Kansas hard draw if they would have had Virginia. Maryland would be in my Elite Eight. You could hammer them right into that Elite Eight. Um, but they got Kansas hard draw. Uh, I, I still have them having a chance, but we'll go ahead here. Uh, we don't get any information on Wichita State or Virginia. Or not Vander, Vanderbilt. Can you actually get information on them? No, they just like don't appear on here. I wish they did so you could get a little bit better of a breakdown on Wichita State Vandy. Uh, but we'll take a look at Arizona. I like Wichita State with Ron Baker uh, and Fred Van Fleet. Uh, you don't really get to, I haven't watched Wichita State all year, but keeping a little bit of tabs on them. Uh, as well as Vanderbilt, I didn't actually get to see Vanderbilt play all but like one time. So I don't know a whole lot about Vandy, but um, I, I, I know they've had a pretty good season, a little bit below expectations, but... Still a good year, and Arizona 1-4 against the top 25. That is not good. 9-3 and three down the stretch, which is really good. Um, they lost twice to Oregon. They lost to Utah by 6 uh, at Utah. They split with Cal. Um, Oregon State, they whooped Oregon State by 17. Uh, they split with Colorado. They lost to Providence by 4. Uh, they split with USC, and they beat. Uh, they won at Gonzaga. That's a good win at Gonzaga. Um, I don't know. I'm just not too confident in Arizona. That one and four record against the top 25, not pretty. 
I'm going to roll with the, the Shockers or the Commodores still over Arizona. Still my big upset. Uh, Miami Buffalo. Miami went 4-3 and three against top 25. Not horrible. Uh, Buffalo 0-3. Oh can't expect a whole lot out of a mid-major. 10-8 and eight in conference is horrible in a, in a small conference like or in a mid-major like uh, Buffalo. Uh, they had a horrible showing against Duke. A horrible showing against Iowa State. Horrible showing against St. Joe's. They lost twice to Akron. Horrible showing against VCU. And a good showing against St. Bonaventure, who could have been a, a tournament team, but uh, just came up a little bit short. Buffalo has a chance in this game, uh, but I just I don't see them having what it takes to beat Miami. So Miami moves on to play Vandy or Wichita State down here, Iowa and Temple. Iowa went, Iowa went four and five against the top 25, most coming early in the season, opposed to later. Uh, Temple one and four, not pretty, uh, but for some reason I do like them in this game. Um, they tended to have close games, or they tended to lose a lot, I guess, um, largely. But notable for uh, Mich or for Iowa, they won twice against Michigan State. Now, one of those, I believe, it may be both, were without Denzel Valentine for Michigan State, or Michigan State, one of those times Denzel Valentine wasn't 100%. Don't quote me on that. Maryland, they lost by six. They lost twice to Indiana. They lost to Dayton. They beat Purdue twice, but I believe they beat Purdue twice when they were hot. Uh, they lost by one to Iowa State. That was early in the season when they were hot. And what did Iowa get all the way up to three? Um, and they lost by they lost to Notre Dame by six. I don't even remember Iowa playing Notre Dame, but they lost to Notre Dame by six. Now to Temple. Uh, they beat SMU, a very nice win. They got kind of, they got handled by Villanova in North Carolina. Played a nice game against Utah. Lost to St. Joe's by one. Nothing to be too disappointed about. Won two out of three against UConn. Lost one in the tournament. It's hard to win three games against one team. Got kind of blown out by Wisconsin and beat Cincinnati twice, which is very nice. Uh, two nice wins. I'm going to still roll with Temple over Iowa. I think Dakozy gets it done. I uh, believe Dakozy will pro will he be guarded by Gazelle. They'll probably switch off and not guard him with Gazelle. And I think Temple has what it takes to, to fend off, uh, to defend Utah. Um, so I do like Temple in this game. We're just taking Villanova over UNC Asheville. Forget that. Um, Temple and Villanova did meet up once during the year. Villanova winning by 16. Was that at Temple? I think it was at Temple. Okay, it doesn't show up. Um, yeah, well, it was at Temple uh, that Villanova took it. So Villanova should have even more of an advantage on neutral court against Temple. Villanova, you know, did have some bad losses to Virginia, Oklahoma uh, early into the year. Uh, they split that with they split with Xavier, and then they, they they couldn't get the third win against Seton Hall. They split with Providence during the regular season, and then beat them in the tournament. Have a nice win over St. Joe's, and I don't know why Akron is a notable win. Don't ask me why Akron is a notable win. Um, we already took a look at Temple. Uh, Temple plays a lot of close games. Uh, Villanova tends to has a 14 point differential. Uh, so I, I still do like Villanova in this game. Then you move on to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt slash Wichita State versus Miami. Um, I, I think I've swung over from picking Wichita State to picking Miami. Um, but I don't like Vanderbilt to beat Miami. I like Wichita State a bit more. But we are going to stay with the Canes and roll Miami. So now that sets up... Uh, Miami, Villanova, Miami, and Villanova tend to give up roughly the same points and score roughly the same points, looking at a bit uh, a nine point differential for Miami and about a fourteen point differential for Villanova. Um, any common opponents? Uh, Miami and Virginia, uh, or Virginia is a common opponent. Villanova lost by eleven at Virginia, and Miami uh, went one and two against Virginia. Is that the only common opponent? I believe that is the only common opponent. Um, against the better competition, Miami 
got smoked by North Carolina. I remember that game. They smoked Utah, but I'm not entirely sure how much that means anymore with Utah. Uh, Louisville, they beat uh, Louisville by eight. That was a game they came back in, I believe. Louisville had them down, and they came back. Uh, they beat Duke, um, and they beat Notre Dame twice. A good win. Uh, Florida, a decent win. It's kind of like that Akron win. I don't know why we... we uh, we tacked that on to the end because uh, neither of them are tournament teams, and they're really not that good. But we're going to stay with Villanova, setting up Villanova, Kansas, the RPI number one versus number four, and the BPI number five versus number three. Similar conference records. Villanova tends to let up a little bit more, a little less points than Kansas, but Kansas tends to score about four more points than Villanova. Uh, Kansas scores four more points than Villanova, and they actually do. Villanova allows four less points than Kansas. Kind of an interesting little stat right there. They both did very well in their conferences. Villanova 4-4 four and four against the top 25. Kansas with that impressive 9-3. and three. What's even more impressive about that Kansas 9-3 and three is that the three of their four losses are to top 25 teams. But you could say the same thing about Villanova 4. Villanova's five losses are to top 25 teams. I believe their only loss to a non-top 25 team is the Seton Hall loss in Kansas's only top 25 loss would be to, would it be Iowa State? It'd have to be Iowa State. Out of all the L's I see on here, I only see three L's though. West Virginia, Michigan State, Iowa State. I forget who else they lost to. Okay, it, it doesn't really matter. The common opponent, the major common opponent is Oklahoma, Kansas. Beat them twice. Villanova got thoroughly dominated by Oklahoma, and that, I believe that's the only common opponent is Oklahoma. I um, believe it was a neutral site for Villanova, Oklahoma, and uh, Kansas, actually, Kansas went to Norman and beat Oklahoma. So in this bracket, we are going to roll with the Jayhawks all the way to the Final Four, setting up uh, Kansas into the Final Four. So we've got Kansas. Beating Austin P, facing UConn, Maryland facing Hawaii, uh, Wichita State or Vanderbilt facing Miami, Temple or Temple and Villanova facing off. Then we have Kansas Maryland, Miami Villanova, and then Kansas Villanova in the Elite Eight, and having Kansas move on to the Final Four. That is going to do it for this bracket breakdown. In the next one, I will be bringing you the East bracket, the North Carolina Xavier bracket. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out.